here. It is, if you can believe it, day 10 of 11 days wow. of the Hamilton Fringe. And uh, I'm here with uh, Brian Morton. Hello. Uh, Dave Brennan. Hey. Olivia Fasulo. Hi. And Ryan Sarah. Hello. And uh, I don't know about you guys, but uh, I'm pretty tired. <laughs> uh, how are you guys feeling? Yep. <laughs> yeah, no, I'm, I'm yeah. 50. You know, I yeah. was my first fringe at 17 mm -hmm. and uh, saw 40 shows and had all that energy. And now I've hit 16 and I think I'm doing really well. But it's just, <laughs> yeah, yeah. You yeah. are doing my very well. Yeah, right. you're, you're doing very well at 16 shows. I have not seen anywhere near that. Uh, Ryan, you weren't you weren't here for the first roundup. How how uh, how has your fringe been? It's been excellent. It's been really really good. Yeah. yeah, it's been going very well. I hope that's true for everybody. Yeah. yeah, yeah, I think so. Yeah. How how have everybody's like? How's the audience has been? Have you have you had good houses? How's how's everything everything been for your for your shows? Uh, yeah, ex excellent houses. Um, uh, great response. Uh, the reviews are good. It's yeah, it's been it's been really really. Um, Fortunate. Yeah. yeah. Good. Good. And people are really responding to your show really, really well, I think. So they tell yeah. me, but I mean, you know, when your friends come up and tell you good job after a show. Well, there, there's, <laughs> there's that, but I think that there's something that, that's telling that you can sort of tell uh, when the show is done. Yeah. Like, did people respond to this? Regardless of what people say after, there's yeah. the... There's the, the moment after the show that tells you if it's if it's kind of genuine, I think. And I think when I saw it, people were responding quite genuinely well, to your show. And I think, I think that... Um, I think that this goes for everybody at the table that we all actually have shows that maybe they're not pure comedy, but there is a strong comedic element. Mm -hmm. I mean, you're in the tragedy of Othello Moore. So <laughs> <laughs> but but, yeah, but there's a lot of fun in that show. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's a... um, and, uh, and so you can tell right away. I mean, in the first five minutes, if nobody's laughing, they're not responding to it. Well, yeah. So yes, they've been laughing. Yeah, but they, they do. Yeah. They, afterwards, they have been talking to me about the other stuff, the, the sort of the more serious elements of, yeah. of my show as well, which is, is kind of nice because you can't always... You assume that they're with you. Yeah. You can kind of feel that energy to some extent, but uh, it's only when people actually confirm it. They say, yeah, I really like this moment. Yeah, absolutely. Um, the guys from Boca talked to me about it, for instance. And yeah. They said that they really like that. I've resonated with some of that stuff. Mm, yeah. It, it's, it's hard when... You know, you're used to like you think something is funny, and you're used to getting a laugh, and you have that one audience that doesn't respond right at yeah. the beginning, and you sort of have that. Okay, yeah. now I'm gonna have to work a little harder. Yeah, we, <laughs> you we guys kind of had a funny one, uh, a funny crowd last night. It was full, but um, the, the the show previous, uh, everyone was getting all the love. Mm. Uh, in all the parts, and mm. then, you know the, the laughs that make you laugh in the show. Yeah, yeah, laughs. yeah. And then last night it was, um, I don't know. That's that's the the mysticism of of comedy. Well, what time were you on last night? We had a great slot. We were eight ten. Yeah. Oh, mm. okay. eight ten on a Friday night. Well, because sometimes sometimes if it's if it's a that's yeah that's very bizarre. It was bizarre. Yeah, um, the ten thirty crowd sometimes they're they're a little bit sleepier. They still enjoy this show. No, but it was um, I, you know, but the, like I've been doing comedy in my whole life, but like that just it's, it just sometimes sometimes happens. Yeah, it's true. Um, it's just like oh, we're just we're just it's like a date. It's like it's just it's not, we're just not you and I. We're, we're not, not clicking. We're not, we're we're clicking. Not, but I assume they still liked it. I think they still liked it. Yeah, but uh, when you come off the previous show, yeah. 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 Spoiled yeah. with laughter. Of course, exactly. for... it's an interesting thing because when I was uh, touring with Keystone Theater, you know, we did the the silent film style, and we would have audiences where they're not laughing at anything, <laughs> and we think we are fucking bombing up here. But yeah. there's nothing we can do. We nothing just have to, have to keep it. going, and then we get to the end, and all of a sudden they're on their feet. Yeah. Mm -hmm. They were enjoying it, just not vocally. You, 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 you can't hear a smile. That's exactly right. You, you know? cannot hear a smile. It does not make a sound. <laughs> and at the end, you want to just say to them, guys, we're the silent. Yeah, we're, yeah, we're yeah, supposed yeah, to be yeah, the yeah, silent yeah, ones. Yeah. You guys, we actually started like and telling people that it was okay to make sound. Because yeah. yeah. when we're silent, they feel like they have to be silent. Well, that's something that it's funny because I was at your show last night. Mm -hmm. But I feel like somebody has to give somebody permission to laugh for the first time. It, the, you that. need to have that loud laugher. You need one yeah. person who has yeah. a laugh like yours, sir, yeah. Brian, yeah. Who, who like gives everybody the permission to, to, to laugh at this show. But mm -hmm. One of the things always, too, is this, you know, those magical notes. Nights. <laughs> Again, I, when I saw Phil's show... For whatever reason, the meeting between audience and him yeah. was quite astonishing, and I, you felt it emotionally. Yeah, I absolutely felt it emotionally. <coughs> so it's I imagine comedy is really not my forte, even though I'm doing one this year. You know, I, I'm looking for the silences. Now, yeah, right? when you can get people to utterly 
yeah. still mm -hmm. don't move, and that says that you're holding them. Yep. The comedy is the, must be the same, but you're still looking for that that reaction, right? Um, and I know just as a director who needs pacing, I don't want to get pace fast, and, and particularly because we're kind of in panic stations, we're right on that 60 minutes. So I'm terrified mm. of the show where they start laughing hilariously and they can't think that it stops them, right? Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. Because we'll go over and they'll pull the lights down on the most dramatic moment. Yeah. Of the play, <laughs> is, uh, Two minutes, right? It's like, ah. So, but, um, yeah. yeah. On, on, on that note, uh, sorry, yeah. uh, Phil, I wanted yeah. to ask you, because um, I saw your show, mm -hmm. yeah. and uh, how did you and your director approach the moments of you know, like there's 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 so much comedy there, mm. um, but there's some really serious subject matter. Yeah. How did yeah. you decide? Like, what was the shading going into? Oh. I guess putting the show together. <clears throat> um, that show took me about eight years to write. Mm. Um, so, and then after after eight years, I sat down with Richard in. January and we started just like looking at the script really really critically and like putting it into its final order and things like that as for the shading the thing about it is that everything that's in the serious zone there mm -hmm. is there at the beginning when when Thomas comes in mm -hmm. yeah. it's the stuff that he actually doesn't intend to talk about that but it's so involved in everything right. that he can't not talk about it when the time comes and so as structurally, it's like I'm warming you up with the with the laughter, yeah. knowing that that I'm gonna have to talk about the serious stuff later on. Yeah. Um, but and that like as for like the actual like how we approached it, we just knew that's where we had to go. Mm -hmm. And I knew at the end I needed some kind of moment of levity. And once I latched onto the stairway of he stairway to heaven thing, yeah. that yeah. sort of like brought it back spoiler. to the, yeah. Well, yeah. I don't know, but you know, all oh, that, yeah. that, 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 no, that's not going to spoil it. That doesn't no, spoil it. No, but, but as I said to you, what really got me was just how precise each beat was mm -hmm. in yeah. terms of from comedy to tragedy, mm -hmm. virtually on a dime. Mm -hmm. right? And the first thing is I thought, my God, he's been doing this show for years because it's that precise. Mm -hmm. And I was astonished to learn I saw the third performance ever yeah. Like, yeah. Oh. yeah you know I, I saw Crystal Barclay's yeah. show and she too because she's been doing it for so long seems to hit very precise marks in the yeah. text yeah she's uh, an assassin uh, whereas some of the other <laughs> one person shows I saw not to put them down but they just weren't you know they were kind of over here and yeah. over here and they didn't quite necessarily hit those precise little beats yeah. mm -hmm. um, and you need to give those little signposts for the audience to actually respond to right yeah um, and particularly one person show because nobody else. Well, actually, right? that's one of the things that, that I have that was really specific for me was to be able to know to to like basically in rehearsal, our goal was just don't aim for anything. Your job is to tell the story to this audience, mm -hmm. and once that becomes the focus, telling the story to this audience, it's important. Then you're making a connection yeah. with that group of people. Mm -hmm. But I've seen solo shows here. I've seen solo shows elsewhere where it's almost as though they don't need me as yeah. an audience member. Yeah. I'm not. Yeah. I'm not necessary. <laughs> they could do this without me. Yeah. That's, um, that's, that's and so it's sort of like idea. it's sort of yeah, but it's like you're you're sort of like not working with your mm -hmm. acting partner there. Right. But yeah, I don't I don't know. Uh, but I know that Crystal is very like she you know she's been doing this for years yep. and so she's yep. she knows exactly what she's doing She'll and so her stuff flat. is like absolutely. I mean, I imagine it must be similar to stand up. I mean, yeah. my friend Larry Smith that's uh, hosted the talk show for seven years and before that had like twenty five mm. career as a stand up comedy. You know, and so there's certain material that is always there, you know, uh, or certain themes that he can riff on forever. Mm -hmm. But each individual reaction, you know, um, particularly when you're on a bill with a number of comics, you know, often they put him first just to kind of get people to a certain level. Uh -huh. um, yeah, yeah. You know, yep. So he's not often the headliner, but he'll often be the person that kind of warms up the crowd and gets them mm -hmm. ready to be receptive to that. Yeah. And that's a skill set. Right? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. Olivia, yeah, as, Olivia. As, yeah. as your Olivia. so so here you are. This is your first friend. It is and your first your first play. <laughs> yes. Um, and so after ten days mm -hmm. with one full well basically two full days because we're like yeah. the fringing hasn't started yet mm -hmm. today. Yeah. yeah. Um, how has it been? How are you feeling? How's your liver? <laughs> <laughs> My liver's been better. <laughs> um, I've got a beer at the Baltimore. <laughs> that would kill you every time. Of a backer button. Yeah. <laughs> 
Um, it's been a really good run. I've had a really good time. I think I've been a little spoiled, like, mm -hmm. um, because I have a bit of home territory, so I don't know if that's a good indicator of, like, how I'm really doing in Fringe, mm -hmm. but I've been having good numbers. It's good. Um, sometimes where there's no family and you're like, oh, man, I don't know what's going to happen. And <laughs> then, uh, so, and, you know, I think we've been... The actors have been a little spoiled with laughter too, uh -huh. like, yeah. they'll, uh, or they'll laugh at things that I didn't think were like my mm -hmm. best joke. Well, or that's whatever. always the fascinating yeah. thing is is yeah. when the audience it's does something you don't expect. what they laugh at and what they don't laugh at, because yeah. like sometimes the joke will hit so well, mm -hmm. and then sometimes it's like a random line that I just kind of threw in, and they're like, "Oh my god, yes, yeah, hilarious." No, no. Yeah. Do you mean do you mean lesser jokes, or do you mean do you mean like they've been laughing at stuff that you didn't even think was funny at all? Well, there's sometimes it's like a lesser joke or even yeah. just like a subtle, like yeah, more yeah, like an like, attitude thing that I was yeah, like, can yeah. you just turn your head like this yeah. in like directing? And then when they do it, then they're like, oh man, yes, now that's the point. And then the <laughs> lot like, that's, now yeah. that you've turned your head like that. Yeah. Yeah. That. <laughs> yeah. But you don't ever know. You yeah. You don't no, know exactly what that audience is going to find. Amazing. And it's different. Each audience. Yeah, yeah so of course. That's yeah. The, because I'm in the booth. I I'm yeah. watching like yes. both the show yeah. and like listening to the audience like uh, what's going on I and actually think it's the, the fact that the audience laughs at a different point each time mm -hmm. is a good thing because it means that the show is not the same every time it yeah. means that yeah. the show is living it's breathing yeah. 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 which is a really healthy thing for a show yeah, it's yeah, still yeah. evolving and changing, which I think is the most surprising for me, is that <laughs> I literally have seen, like, day one to, what, mm -hmm. day six today? Mm -hmm. And each time it's been different. Mm -hmm. yeah, well, well, you were the first show I saw. Mm -hmm. And my reaction, because I'm an old guy, was is that this was very much a young person's play. And mm -hmm. it wasn't just because, you know, everybody put it involved. Kids. <laughs> 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 Not that I know, anyway. Uh, so I get that this kind of, and I sometimes feel, you know, my own show, for example, feels very much like an old people. Mm -hmm. We're all 50, right? Yeah. Um, and even further, because, uh, you know, um, Olivia's show is one of three McMaster productions. Yeah. Uh, it actually. Comes out of Mac. Well, actually, I'm from Mac, but it's not from the honors performance. Mm -hmm. Is that okay? No. Then I need to correct that. Yeah. I thought it was. And I had done a little write-up, and that was the first thing I wrote. So I'm glad <laughs> you corrected <laughs> that, because I, that hasn't been published yet. Are, are the um, other performers, the other people involved, are they McMaster as well? Or um, they just I, I've got a good mix. So I have two alumni from McMaster who just graduated. I have someone who's currently at Mohawk, someone who's at Redeemer. And then I have someone who's you know, just working full-time. I actually have two people who are like working full-time. Yeah. I'm a little nice. bit older that, than That's them. remarkably diverse. Yeah. Most yeah. people, particularly with their first production, it tends to be, oh, my friends that I know yeah. from school. Yeah, yeah absolutely. No, 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 that's <laughs> not. Um, I had two people who auditioned for me who I knew previously, and they just really worked for roles that I had. But other people I pulled from kind of a wide source of people. We had some online auditions. Mm. We, yeah. yeah. Your Lilith was the one that seemed uh, particularly strong. Yeah, everybody's and, been... And, uh, and had been, uh, didn't feel like that, what I call student crowd. Mm. She felt mm. like she had... Is she a professional? Uh, she, well, she's done some more community. Right. Okay, right. We, have, we have someone who's actually done like commercials and stuff, mm -hmm. too. So it's a really wide range of... Um, yeah. Give it another yeah. year, and uh, next year we'll be like, I actually met this person doing uh, Pokemon Go. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I met, I met yeah absolutely. Yeah. Don't sass Pokemon No, no, no. Go. I, I I'll sass it up. So I actually, I actually did up. a whole bunch of flyering while playing Pokemon Go. Did you? Yeah. I did. I did. I was over at the Cenotaph and sat uh, there for a little while. Somebody had dropped a lure, and... I started playing there for a while, and you know everybody starts talking to each other, which oh never happens in a God. city. People don't talk yeah. to each other. But they don't know. Sure. Exactly. So we're sitting there, we're talking, and then I happen to say, "Well, I'm not even from here, so this is a blast." They're like, "Oh, so why are you in town?" I was like, "Well, I'm doing a show." Oh, flyer, yeah. flyer, flyer, but flyer, flyer. I don't know if any of them actually came, but see what you should do is you should drop a lure, <laughs> yeah, right, right in front of Mills, and then and then leave your poster <laughs> right on the patch where the lure yeah. is, and people uh, come around yeah. and be like, "What is that Pokemon?" That threw yeah, that's a new Pokemon. Yeah. What is that? The commandment? I can't catch it. <laughs> then they might be wandering across the stage. The whole yeah, time. yeah, no. No, I was that's... still laughing about uh, last Saturday when we were joking about yeah. flyering the uh, Paul McCartney concert. <laughs> 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 that was 
Yeah, so absolutely. Far. Did anybody yeah. do that? Did no, I didn't see anyone. Absolutely. Anyway. It was just, oh, parking was nuts that night. Oh, and my God. Again, a number of people I know from the fringe went. Got some guys, yeah, right. Well, um, and he did uh, it all his entire. I heard there was like his... five encores. That's yeah. what I heard. Yeah. Wow. And then uh, uh, it's not we are too far from fringe stuff, but yeah. so we came out um, the York Street uh, exit, and uh, and all these people were like cheering at the bus, and I was like. Look at these, to my girlfriend, I was like, look at these idiots. Oh my God. He <laughs> was in the door of the bus, oh. waving at fans <laughs> as it peeled onto York Boulevard. Wow. And he uh, was so oh. And I think they threw in a fellow more. Uh, yeah, for sure. Hard out. Yeah. 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 You made Absolutely. it into an yeah. airplane just, catch just through. Yeah. Um, no, it was crazy. Yeah. Um, you gotta, yeah, have, you gotta have like a, have a, have a, have a Neil Patrick Harris moment with uh, Sir yeah, Paul, yeah. right? Yeah. Um, I don't think he was in town that long enough to do that. Sadly, don't I think, think he was so. like, yeah. But maybe he'll sneak back. Maybe, maybe. you never know. You never know who's in the back row. He's not sneaking back. No, he's not. No, there's no way. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Um. So how? What have you guys? Everybody seen? We know that that Brian's seen like 16 shows. Yep. Um. I think you were at least 16. At one I point. uh. I think now. Some of this is because I saw Othello Moore in April and I mm-hmm. saw Taller okay. previous to its right. run as well. So I'm kind of counting those as having been seen, even yep. though I technically didn't see them during the Okay. Um, I will still try to make it to Othello, um, but I am not. You know the show yeah. inside out, though. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Anyways, so counting those two, I think I'm up to 18, 19. Wow. Nice. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. So... Uh, what have you seen that's the, that's really good? What have you What have you guys enjoyed? T- top of my list is, is a Teeny Tiny Music Show. Oh fuck yeah! I Absolutely love that show. Her energy, the uniqueness of the show, the creativity of the show. Yeah. It's, the fact that I think it is the only actual site specific show in the festival. I might be wrong about that. I might yeah. Be with one, but I think it's the only one where it's like it has to take place in this bar. In this way, oh, absolutely, it doesn't work. Absolutely, and for all those reasons and more, I just I loved that show. I engaged with it. it engaged yeah, with me and it was just it was beautiful. I have to agree with you. I saw that show, and just the fact that it was coming from all over with some really amazing simple theater magic, just yeah. like happening there. I just from beginning to end, I was smiling. And yeah. it was it was amazing. It was just just a lot of fun to watch. Even if you were not completely swept away, you were you were guaranteed to be entertained and enjoy. It. Absolutely, <laughs> absolutely. Um, but for me, that's that's right at the top. <clears throat> yeah, I have to agree. I have to agree. Um, yeah. So, anybody else? What, are there any uh, other shows that you've seen that you really? Those tapped up girls, man. Yeah. You know that show wow. fascinated the hell out of me. <laughs> um, and I, I walked I've out. Seen it. Richard and I walked out, and the first thing that my director said was, "Well, that was cheery." But yeah. Yeah, yeah, the thing it's is, the, there's hell, there yeah. are no laughs in that show. No, but I did not care. No, I it was fascinating. No, no to laughs watch. there. Yeah, no. but you don't need yeah. them. No, not for that no. show. No, 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 no. Uh, two girls, a spot on the floor, and a sheet. But what was astonishing yeah. was how quickly they created an ambience. One yeah. of the mm-hmm. things that hit me was uh, Poe's Telltale Heart. <clears throat> ah. And uh, they both picked up on that and said, yes, that's exactly what mm. we were going yeah. for. It's yeah. amazing you caught that. Mm-hmm. But again, I love this term poor theater, which comes from Jerzy Gutowski, not bad theater, poor theater. Mm-hmm. That meaning that there is nothing there's nothing except yeah. us to yeah, tell yeah. the story. And that can focus you and kind of concentrate you. And it's astonishing how sibling-esque they created. Mm-hmm. You know, they're not physically that alike. Yeah. But the relationship they yeah. created yeah. was so sister-sister. Yeah. Uh, and they also created, in a, without spoiling the show, they kind of created their mother on stage simultaneously. Mm-hmm. Yeah. In a very, yeah. yeah. And given the plot synopsis, I don't think that you can spoil that. No. No. no, no. no. I said that. <laughs> you no know, going into it, just simply from the, the notoriety on the case, which I remember being yeah. the old guy, mm-hmm. uh, that, uh, uh, you know, 2005, when the murder was in January 2003, mm-hmm. and the son particularly went on and on and on yeah. about it. Uh, it particularly relates the circumstances around the trial, or sorry, around the case. It doesn't get into the trial and the media circus mm-hmm. and the the continued hounding, even to this day, because you know essentially they served some time and were paroled and have been rehabilitated yeah. and now have lives and and because they were young offenders at that time, which always is a little catchphrase amongst certain communities, 
they got away with murder. Mm -hmm. This was the attitude, yeah. right? Yeah. Uh, instead of accepting the fact that there was some circumstances that created all of this, <coughs> and that they were, um, you know, those circumstances created the act. If those circumstances had been different, yeah. there was some abuse, there was yep. some alcoholism, there was uh, an immigrant uh, people who had come to Canada and that difference between the children embracing Canada mm -hmm. and a parent that did not. <coughs> and all of that thing kind of created a circumstance where they figured, you know, mom not being around is a good thing. Mm -hmm. <laughs> as far as the bathtub girls go, the only difficulty that I had was really with the venue yeah. because I was just a couple of rows back but I had trouble seeing it because yeah. that venue is so because of the way that it's set up if they're as soon as they're kneeling or on the floor yep, which it's hard to, it. which was a lot of it yeah. so I saw people you know, having to stand up oh, to, yeah, to see yeah. what was going on and uh, that just sort of presents it just as, as far as the staging goes mm -hmm. I think there there might have been venues that, that would have been better for that that particular uh, 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 show, but as far as the show went, generally it was really amazing, and, and you're gonna see it today. Yeah, yeah I'm excited. It's, yeah, it's it's good to sit at the front. Yeah, yeah. okay. Sit at the front. No. Yeah. Sit at the front. It's kind of like nothing you've seen before. Yeah. Yeah. So just 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 know that. Yeah. Uh, what about uh, what about you, Dave? What have you seen that, that um, you really like? Other than uh, Bathtub Girls, uh, one I saw yourself. Thank you. Yep. Fantastic. Um, but I haven't, uh, I haven't had a chance to get out to, yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> making golf motions over there. Um, uh, I, 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 I'll be straight up. I haven't had a chance to get out to that much, mm. but, uh, but there's a gentleman to my right who yeah. has. <laughs> um, what was kind of cool, and it was directly inspired by the conversation last week, was that I actually started then blogging about them and writing about them. Mm -hmm. Not in the sense that I was reviewing, because I still, you know, if I didn't like something, I just didn't write about it. Yeah. It was a question of trying to steer people towards stuff that, exactly what we're doing right now. Yeah. Exactly what we're doing right now. It, I liked this, and I responded to this, and you might possibly respond to it, mm -hmm. too. And with 47 shows in the festival, and just the reality, remember I told you from the buttons, the average is three? Yep. Right? right. Most people see three shows. That, that we pat them on the back and love them. But if you see more than three shows, then we pat you on the back and jump up and down, and if you're really crazy, like my dear friend Tom Sarkowski, who will see 30 plus, and basically has a schedule that he works out. He has a window, he's going to see, uh, he, he's telling you that he's going to see everything. He's got, he's got it in his And he goes to London, yeah, and he yeah, goes yeah, to yeah. Toronto, and he just fringes, man. Yeah. And again, the, Tom was on the fringe board for many years, he actually predated me on it, and that was it, because he's mm. just a fan. Yeah. He has no particular experience in theater or anything like that, but he just supports the whole idea. And particularly, and most impressive thing, you know, if you had a board lanyard which got him into every show, well, you'd buy the ticket. Hmm. At every single performance, right? Because, support. yeah, well, um, I think he's, he's gainfully employed in a job that allows him, you know, it's still cheaper than a season subscription to Strat. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. yeah but it is. That's a good uh, mar marquee for the fringe now. There you yeah, go. It's still cheaper than a subscription <laughs> to Strat. <laughs> you can see 40 plus days. And, and, you know, and, the, and he remembers The quality stuff. difference might yes. be. Yes. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's good of a take. But that's one of the things. It's funny. The biggest change I've noticed since I've been involved in the festival, and you can certainly speak to this because you're part of it, and you've still been around for three years as well. But I noticed the biggest shift has been the strength of the staircase and the BYOB. That, um, uh, you know, almost every show there, because it's they're curated shows, mm -hmm. they, you know, um, the, dare I say, the hit and miss quality is much higher. Mm. And so I've noticed that people are basically going to the staircase and tending to stay there because why would they go anywhere else when the next show is so wonderful? And they run into other people who are coming out of wonderful shows and saying, that's really wonderful. And um, and don't be wrong, that this is that model, particularly in Edmonton, half the shows in the Edmonton Fringe are in these and are curated. And thus, there's kind of a better it's it's least. definitely less than half, yeah. but yeah. one of the main ones is the Ecole Francophone, yeah. which is uh, a curated venue, yeah. and there are people who will go to those first okay. because they are curated. So they have, uh, and you know, in Edmonton, they're a little they've been doing this for over thirty years. They're yeah. a little tired of the yeah. Yeah. of of the hit and miss quality, and some yeah. people just don't want to. They'll wait until the reviews come out before yeah. they go to see something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But they go to the Ecole Francophone to uh, to see some shows that are 
likely to be to be good because of the the, the, the curated nature of them. Um, the it, just one of the one criticism that I might have because uh, I haven't been to the staircase, I haven't had a chance to go there, but I know like some of the artists have come back from there, and. Um, they noticed that um, they weren't permitted to flyer to put their flyers on the tables there. I did. Uh, yeah. <clears throat> then they, they did, and then their flyers got moved to a table uh, yeah. elsewhere. Oh, okay. Yeah. I, just, which, I just put them there. That's yeah. Oh. Yeah. And the only, the only, and I, part of me is like, I understand you're promoting the shows that are there, but you were also part of the fringe, and we don't do that at the Baltimore House. Nobody yeah. does that at the Baltimore House. Yeah. Either you're part of the fringe or you're not, and that's. That is one criticism that I have of that, but I can see both sides. Um, but I'm I'm more of on the uh, uh, socialist side yeah. of the uh, fringe uh, promotional yeah. kind of side. No, there's a there's a table um, by the uh, theater. Or something. Yeah, yeah. Where where? But uh, yeah, no. Like you can get your stuff on the table. But just it's there's like a history there. there yeah. yeah, which I can probably speak to. The whole reason why the BYOB got put into the festival, which a number of other festivals did. Mm -hmm. uh, for the longest time was because of the staircase. It was without a doubt. In, in the first years of the fringe, which I was not around for, I was just a volunteer, um, they desperately wanted to be a fringe venue. And because our main funding was coming from the downtown BIA, mm -hmm. well outside of the downtown yeah. core, mm -hmm. they were told, no, mm -hmm. you can't be a fringe venue. And they, re I say, they responded, that's the word I'm seeking for, by having a fridge festival. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, I remember mm -hmm. that. And, and even the year that there was no Hamilton Fridge Fest, uh, Fringe Festival, there still was a Fridge Festival, which was kind of that energy mm -hmm. put on a festival by itself yeah. in a single venue, right? So I thought, again, this is stupid. <laughs> like anybody that wants to be part of the Fringe on a certain level should be able to be yeah. part of the Fringe. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. you yeah. have to create those opportunities for that. Um, as long as you don't stretch your audience too thin, if you if you added fourteen more venues you come with, with six shows and across the entire city, then you got you're, it. Yeah. You're, you're you're going to try to be expanding show numbers, and basically what you're going to wind up with is instead of having um, you know a hundred shows with solo houses yeah. across the city, you're going to wind up with a hundred shows with ten people in every audience. I heard that, that London's cutting out a whole venue for next yeah. year yeah. because yeah. they have been having. Yeah, they London's have besides the yeah. Kathy and I have directly had this conversation three or four times that. If a BYOB supports the other shows in the festival, yeah. um, then they're fine with it. But at the point that they feel that the the BYOB is harming the other shows in the festival, they basically said no. That's, I mean, that interestingly, that is, I think, what happened with Bread and Circus in Toronto years ago that, mm. that made Toronto switch from having a BYOB model yeah, to site where to, you can only do site specific. And so you don't have a curated space the way that you do it every other. Yeah. Uh, uh, friends, you only have the site-specific stuff. The only other time it, 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 it had happened before um, was Patrick at the Lyric attempted to do a little mini-series uh, mm. three years ago, which ultimately fell apart because of problems with the building, mm. um, specifically the roof leaking during uh. performances. And there was a deluge that night. And oh! I heard about that. I'd been in the Lyric previous, to that. I, I wasn't at the Lyric at that fringe, but but I'd been at the Lyric with another show uh, earlier, not mine, somebody else's, yeah. but I was like, performing it. And there was like a, a light mist kind of a rain, and the next day there was like a swimming pool that oh, day. Oh, jeez. Like, a leak is an understatement. <laughs> and, yeah. and that uh, night, it, it poured uh, rain. Uh, Noah would have been impressed. Uh, uh, yeah, yeah. And so I can only imagine the catastrophe mm. it must have hit. Yeah. Must have been. But Patrick like, did you know, something extraordinary. In the middle of the French, he found other venues Mm. Uh, for uh, you know most of the shows, the one that really suffered, although again they look back at it as one of the best things that happened to them, was the aerial dance troupe, right? Who mm -hmm. needed the grid? And yes, yes, stuff. yes. Uh, and they ended up doing a pickup performance uh, in a lot. Yeah, mm. which was, turned out to be one of the most amazing shows of the festival, simply because of their circumstances, right? right? But yeah. Pam was in, in, in my cool. show, and she's talked about exactly that, and, and yeah, she did not remember that with with. Um, uh, distaste or, or, mm, or hate, but she yeah. remembers that it being everything almost a blessing that they got booted into this parking lot. Yeah, but logistically, it's a nightmare. Like, like in of course, your festivals. Yes, absolutely. Oh, yeah. The Players Guild, which we're at, is now a regular fringe venue, but the first time it was ever used in the fringe was because of Patrick's madly having to move three shows mm -hmm. uh, into a, any space that he could find, right? We always looked at the guild as too far out of the core again. Although yeah. we see now that staircase even further, yeah. it's pulling stuff towards yeah. what, 
And again, I, I can't judge because I've been out of the loop for a couple of years, but it doesn't feel like the guild is underattended. It doesn't feel no, like no, the guild is only, it's only like a 15 minute walk from HTI or Mills because I did but, both of those. But um, still remember the joy when we had the bomb and the acclimation <laughs> space and two spaces at the Downtown Art Center. We were all within a block of each other. Yeah. So the, the ability to kind of do the multiplex thing, yeah. oh, I, I, I definitely, it only takes yeah. four and a half minutes to get from venue to venue. Yeah. Yeah. Even but Aquarius was you know, an eight minute walk from that little corner. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but still, but, it's close enough but to it's, get there. But Aquarius is a, I love that venue. Um, it, it, it's so good uh, to have that. And mm -hmm. I, I particularly, I mean, you mentioned the Downtown Art Center, now the Citadel. Citadel. Yeah. And, um, and the, uh, the upstairs theater is huge for a fringe yeah. venue. Yeah. If you get a decent sized fringe audience of 30 or 35 in there, which is decent at the fringe, it feels like a giant vacuum. Yeah. Of oh space. my God. Uh, I've performed in a, in a, in a, uh, in a, I think they have like 400 seats in Calgary yeah. and in a house where in any other venue you had like 50 people and you're like this is a great house and awesome. 50 people yeah, yeah, yeah. is like is like nothing in there so it feels like it's empty comedy, it's yeah. oh god that's death because yeah. laughter is contagious and if you can't if, if you can't, can't do that the contagious. yeah absolutely <laughs> but uh, as I mentioned that you know that venue in 300 seats was the one that Nailing the Hammer nailed it in in 2007 selling 280 yeah. people in performance and still has the has they had the Maximum potential growth. Of course, yeah. yeah. So yeah. it's one of those rare things, you know, if you can somehow put a show in that will play to those kind of numbers, it yeah. must be wonderful not to be in a hundred seater, right? Yeah. But typically, typically, you know, I would not want to be. I would not want to be in that. Yeah. And, and particularly, again, I never like to talk about the bad, but there is that awful thing I call the death spiral. If nobody comes to see the first shows and nobody's coming to the last shows, and the worst nightmare that technically has only happened a few times mm -hmm. is the show that nobody attends at all. Yeah, that's awful. That's yeah, funny, you know. yeah. And often it's from people from out of town. Mm -hmm. I love that as fringe artists, we're quieter about this than we were talking about the murders. No, it's, yeah. Yeah. it's you know you know why you know why because it's it's like it's like that's the nightmare that's the, I've just torn my heart out, yeah, thrown yeah. it on the ground. It's exactly. like we were talking about the bathroom girls yeah. earlier and the murders that happened. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, These yeah, two yeah, girls yeah. killed their mother. We're like, yeah, that was interesting circumstance. What a great play. Yeah. As soon as. Brian says, "Boy, what, it would suck if, you, if nobody showed up to your friend show. Like, There's this moment of silence. Where, yeah. and we're, we're all practically crossing. Yeah, it's because yeah. because you know what? We can all picture <laughs> like, that. Like, just knock on wood yeah. right now. Uh, exactly. Like, That's when it's happened. One thing we learned. <laughs> yeah. Back in 2007, there was this massive hit show by uh, Rob Salerno called Balls. <laughs> yep. And in those days, the person who put the schedule together used to basically put four shows in the same block and mm -hmm. would move the block yeah. around. And so the other three shows that were playing opposite <laughs> Rob's shows." had a suicidally bad time. Oh, yeah. And in my venue, I was a venue technician that year. The 8 o'clock on a Saturday night show, nobody showed up to. Mm -hmm. And they were having kittens. Yeah. Justifiably having kittens. Yeah. Because there was nothing wrong with their show. Yeah. Everybody in the frickin' building was in the yeah. show. Yeah. And, and so we learned from that and never, ever, ever put people against the same show all the time. You might lose one performance, but you'll never lose every show because of that. You were, you were mentioning that, that, that um, one of the, that, that often when somebody faces a performance where, where nobody's coming, that they're from out of town. And I do, I think that there's, you can, with the proximity to Toronto, if you are a, a Toronto artist coming to Hamilton, I think there's a temptation to just think to yourself, oh, I'll just, I'll just come in every day for my show and then I'll, I'll go back. Yeah. But then you're just, you're not promoting your show and you're not a part of the fringe. It's so important to You'll just, disappear. yeah, exactly. Yeah. If you're not out there being seen, nobody sees you. That was my struggle when we did my show in 2010 in the London Fringe. Mm -hmm. I uh, made a point that even on the nights that we weren't on, mm -hmm. that I, and we were commuting back and forth, so it was a you know 90 minute drive each way. Um, my cast, who were all stuck into J jobs and stuff, um, and as a result, but I would make a point that on the yeah. nights that we weren't on, I would drive in just to see shows and to fly around and mm -hmm. to hang out at the Fringe Club and all the rest of it. But um, I think one of the reasons why the show didn't necessarily click in London was precisely that reason. Because we weren't resident, yeah. we weren't seen to be part of, we kind of showed up, did our show, and split. Yeah, I think that, that you don't have to be resident, yeah. you just have to be seen. Like, you could still do it yeah. by still staying in Toronto and coming in, as long as you made yourself seen, as long as you went yeah. out flyering, as long yeah. as you, you know, made the connections with other artists and all that stuff. I think that that's a big part of it. 
But I want to get back to uh, some of the the good shows that, that yeah. you've seen. Um, can you? Are there any any real highlights uh, for you? Uh, I had never seen it before, but Taller, which was only for four days, was freaking brilliant. Mm. Oh my god! Again, I, I, I always say I love Sky Gilbert's work. So those people that like this kind of thing will like this kind of thing. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, but the performance was so strong. It's basically a one person show, but it's not, and that was kind of a reveal. Mm. Uh, you know, in the middle, 45 minutes into this one-person show, suddenly another character runs on stage and there's this little scene, mm. um, which then colors everything you've seen and turns it all on its head. Mm. Um, and then, so it, again, it, the, um, what else? Stuff I liked. I really liked Free Soar again. Mm-hmm. I, I'm Scottish, so I kind of get yeah. Scottish. Yeah, yeah, jokes, yeah. yeah. Gaelic jokes appeal to me. Um, the shows which we talked about last week: Psychosis and Faith. Um, Did you see Love Spell? Love Spell, yeah, I liked Love Spell. Love Spell um, is from London, Ontario, although they're mainly Brock University alumni. So that's, the, again, they have that long standing mm-hmm. relationship that always really adds. Um, one of the things I liked about it, 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 one of the themes, it's in your show as well, it's in your show is a lot of this kind of millennial relationship stuff. <laughs> Um, but what kind of got me was that there were much more kind of punchy little joke one-liner things. Mm. And so there's a lot of laugh out loud humor, and then it slowly starts to get serious, right? Mm. So I thought one of the things that Love does really well, it gets that balance right between, you know, there's a story here I'm trying to tell, and at the same time, the best way to provoke your action is to make you laugh. Right? Mm-hmm. And again, because I just saw it, and, and I, I think, you know, uh, Ryan's show, has that balance in space too. Mm-hmm. And I yeah. actually, the, the quote that's been running in my head is that, you know, of all the plays I've seen, all the scripts, his is by far the best. Mm-hmm. It's so carefully constructed and um, and kind of manages. And I also get that you kind of created this persona, this alter ego. Uh, and again, I've only seen about three of your shows, but <laughs> it feels like it's, even though it's not the same character, yeah. and they all have different names, but essentially, this alter ego I, again I picture you in modern and free particularly right and so that kind of riffs back and mm. forth right? and they're populist and yeah. they're mm. cool yeah mm. Olivia mm-hmm. what have you seen that you really enjoyed uh, well I spent a whole day at the Players Guild just binge watching all of, nice. of the nice. shows nice good um, I've seen about 10 shows, but I've seen them twice because what happens <laughs> is that all of my cast and crew are like, yeah, you go see the show. And then when I come back, I'm like, it's awesome. They're like, okay, we have to go see it. Right. So yeah, then I've seen of course, shows. Yeah. I've seen your show twice now. I, I noticed that you were there a second time, so thank you for coming <laughs> up. Um, I saw your show twice. <laughs> you did. I did. Um, I've seen Unoriginal Sin twice, which I can't say enough good things about. It's mm. very, very good. I mean, yeah, millennial. For sure. Mm -hmm. It's literally like what the selling point is, is that it's millennial. Um, (laughs) Like, (laughs) but you'll get the joke. (laughs) Yeah, they they had a, I know Richard was going to see that show yesterday, but they were postponed due to some technical issues. Oh my gosh, yesterday was a rough day. Like, was it, were they, were they just overwhelmed with the AC in the building or something? Okay, what happened was. (laughs) Okay, okay. uh, (laughs) It, basically, what happened is we're not supposed to have the AC running when the stage lights are on. Yeah, oh. Okay, what ha- <laughs> right. from what I understand, yeah, someone added the stage lights on and the AC, <laughs> like the first or second day of Fringe, and was like, nothing's happening, so we'll just keep doing it. No. <laughs> so, but what happened yesterday, no. and probably... <laughs> oh, you yeah, can, I, you already, can I already know where this is going. going. Yeah. I know what's happening. What happened was that, yeah... Everything went down, oh, yeah. and the AC and the stage lights weren't working. And actually, one of my cast members is the direct yeah, yeah. one of the directors of Unoriginal Sin, and her show is like one or two shows before mine. So she had to come meet up with us, and she's like, "The lights are down. We're we're being <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's a, it's a <coughs> also having seen Unoriginal yeah. Sin, it's it's busy. It's a yeah, very it's technically using every yeah. light in the show. Oh my god. Okay. Yeah, yeah. And, so and, and, they and, move around, right? yeah, at so. a certain point. It was like, do do we do it with just normal lights and the house lights up? <laughs> to which you cannot. <laughs> yeah. Um. Anyways, they got the lights back up, but the literally the the cast and crew and also all the people in the audience were drenched mm-hmm. in yeah. <laughs> yeah. sweat. Yeah. yeah. Um. Yeah. But I mean, they still had, they had probably. Uh, she said probably one of her 
best shows in terms of like hitting with the audience and humor and stuff. So it, like good. it didn't affect that, but they were they were postponed by like 15 minutes. Um, and then the venue tech, he was like, he's a really great guy. He just um, he just didn't have a lunch, so it didn't affect. Mm. Oh, poor guy. Yeah, he yeah. was. Poor guy. He's honestly. Uh, Jacob. Yeah. Let's mention yeah. my name, Jacob. Yeah. Jacob yeah. is yeah. honestly yeah. the best. Um, I, yeah. Yeah. No, I mean, I'm really fortunate because because Mills Hardware, they'll like blast the AC uh, in between shows, and then they'll turn it off, and that building holds the AC that's longer big. than most buildings. So you get a cool yeah. building, yeah. but no noise. No, no, well, that's what I'm trying to go yeah. for is because yeah. that. I've tried it with, and I've seen shows with the AC on, yeah. and that, after a while, that hum just becomes distracting. What was weird to me was that somewhere above, there's some plumbing, and every once in a while, the toilet goes. Oh yeah, 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 <laughs> yeah. I know. <laughs> and considering water goes through the pipes. Above and considering that, that my show begins by talking about being on the toilet, yeah. it's like my worst thing is when I get to the end. And, uh, and there's a moment of silence. I'm waiting. I'm afraid that one night at that moment of silence is going to be like a flush. <laughs> it's just going to be a little bit distracting. Um, have you guys seen Indecision? No, no, no. I missed it last night. Let me know. It's, it's so heartbroken. It's really so it. deservedly a critic's pick. Um, and just such a great way to bring the audience in right off the top. I mean, it's, it's, it's out there in the presence in, in, in all of the, the, the synopsis. So she's just been asked to marry her boyfriend. And so the audience becomes all of the facets of her brain. And we're all going to decide together what her answer is going to be. Cool. So immediately, she brings everybody into the world and uh, makes a connection with the audience that she uses throughout the show. Nice. So brilliantly done. and So uh, just so entertaining. Yeah. So I highly recommend that if you get a chance to see it. I don't know if they have another another show. I would hope, show. but um, be precise. Yeah. yeah. Anything? Anything else that, that folks saw that? that uh, what did uh, What did everyone think of Dirty Girl? I haven't had a chance to get out to staircase at all. And yeah. really, it's it's hard because you know I'm I, 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 there's shows that here that I need to see. There's, yeah. So, you know, so timing is is super important, and I'm on foot the whole yeah. time. So. Getting up to staircase can be a bit of a, a bit of a, a pain. Has anybody seen seen yeah. Dirty Girl? I, I, although to be fair, as I as I said when I wrote about it, I saw the little preview thing he did a, a week before the festival, mm-hmm. oh, okay. which was his dress rehearsal session. Right. So I always have to couch because I don't know in performance what might have changed between that yeah. Yeah. dress rehearsal and the actual show. Yeah. But um, again, what I was so impressed about it was that. Um, well, sticks to this point. Art is never finished, merely abandoned. Mm-hmm. Right? And uh-huh. so this was originally a one act play he wrote last year, mm-hmm. uh, which did not get an enormous response. Mm. And, and, but and he was very sincere about it, and, and without giving too much away, it's basically about uh, an inappropriate image being shared yeah. in. Well, actually, the image isn't inappropriate, the fact that it gets shared mm-hmm. is what is yeah. inappropriate. Right? Yeah. I myself think it's perfectly permissible to share those things amongst loved sure. ones. So I don't, yeah, of course. Um, and um, but it gets out there, and where it kind of gets interesting is it kind of takes this techno sci-fi twist hmm. that there's this demon within the internet kind of waiting to pounce mm-hmm. on the people who post such things, yeah. and then immediately the social media Twitterverse goes ape shit. Yeah, uh, and, and and his play title is actually a hashtag, which is very clever because every time you mention the damn. Play title, you essentially... You're essentially hashtagging. You're hashtagging. You're, hashtagging. you're, you're yeah, helping them to trend on Twitter. Yeah, which is a brilliant... Yeah. You are an evil... Whoever you are, well, I don't Michael know Grass. you. Michael, Michael Grass, you, you evil, yeah. brilliant man. Yes. Uh, but, so what was interesting about it was, you know, it didn't quite work uh, last year, but he didn't give up on it. Mm. He simply took the advice and essentially rewrote the show from yeah. scratch. And, he, again, it's basically a three-hander, two women, and a guy... And I myself found the two women were so strong. So mm-hmm. strong. Not yeah. to put the guy down. Yeah. But it's just, it's now a play about two women and their friendship, mm-hmm. or lack thereof. And, yeah. and what happens over the jealousy and, you know, competing sexuality and ultimately. Yeah. And there's this huge irony which whams home. Because the whole reason the picture gets taken in the first place is because she doesn't actually want to sleep with him. Right. And so she thinks, I'll take this little selfie and eat. Right. She yeah. Little fantasies yeah. and all yeah. is good, but because she's created something permanent, it then mm-hmm. comes back to fight her yeah. ass. Yeah. But the irony is, if she just slept with the guy, yeah. then yeah. none yeah. of this yeah. whatsoever. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And that's okay because yeah. yeah. there's no record and no evidence, yeah. right? And so, um, again, yeah. it thought mm. that, again, very much a young person's play. Yeah. All are 
pile this in. Yeah. He, one of the things he shared yesterday on social media was some comments from proud 18 year old girls. Yeah. Uh, they were just astonished that their What's, wives are on stage, right? This is one of the things, one of the lessons that I think people can take from a lot of fringe yeah, is yeah. that. And you know, I found an article yesterday about uh, how to how to get millennials to go to the theater. Yeah. Um, and one of the ways, oh, actually, oh literally, the thing is, don't give them what they can get anywhere, anywhere else. else. Yeah. Teeny tiny music show. Yeah. You can't get that experience yeah. anywhere else. Yeah. And you know, talking about things that that you know, instead of like throwing just another Shakespeare, Othello Moore, on the other hand, mm -hmm. different than just like doing Othello. But, but Ryan's got a reputation for doing classical theater too, but he mm -hmm. never does them straight. They're always adaptations. No, we did no, but, about nothing last year, and it was true. It was the but it's like and Romeo and Juliet and Escape is comedy. Yeah, that yeah. that was not Romeo and Juliet at yeah. all. That yeah. was me messing around and doing my own thing. But yeah. we did much do about nothing uh, last year, and and we've done Faustus before. And, and, before. and I, I think that I think that those plays have their place. Yeah, um, they absolutely do have their place, but for the most part. Um, we have a glut of, of, of Shakespeare, and we have a glut of a lot of classical stuff. We have a glut of old people theater, mm -hmm. which not, there's nothing to be wrong with, with nothing wrong with old people theater because they buy subscriptions. Yeah. So you yeah. know, people who do subscriptions, you know, that's great. But I mean, theater that you can't like, that you can't get anywhere else. Something that you can't see anywhere else. That's that's I think. Something so Dirty Girl, for example, mm -hmm. and people who are of the age that is depicted in the play are getting something out of it, realizing that theater can is not what they think. Mm -hmm. Similar with with Teeny Tiny Music Show. Um, you know, Crystal had a funny has a funny line in her show about uh, her like uh, auditioning and then like doing like a summer theater show, mm -hmm. like auditioning for Norm Foster show. Yeah, yeah, yeah. exactly <laughs> the Norm Foster show, and that got a huge laugh. But it was a sophisticated laugh because the, the the fringe crowd knew. Of like, course, yeah. Like, yeah. It was like the laugh that is able to distinguish. Like I get it, mm -hmm. um, and and you need that commercial theater. Yeah. Uh, but also, like it's a fringe show. Yeah. But it's it's it was like a weird. Uh, it yeah. Was a funny, it awesome. Was funny twist. Yeah. Norm Foster lives in Ancaster, though, yeah. so he's technically a local. Player. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Even though he's the most produced Canadian playwright. Yeah. But, but yeah. He's technically a local playwright, and I have seen him at the fringe just buying mm. tickets. Nice. Oh, so that's right. That's I've cool. Seen it. He's just been, you know, I'm buying tickets nice. to his show or whatever. That's great. great. I haven't actually seen him produce a show for the French. That would be a very good that would thing. be cool. Well, but but you know, know the thing is that I mean, while that's while that's definitely possible, then I think that you start to get into something that I uh, I see at Toronto Summer Works where uh, Judith Thompson will throw a show in, sure. and that at that point I'm like, this is not no longer experimental. This is like you know, Judith fucking Thompson could Unless, take this play to Tarragon. Yeah, yeah. Unless she's doing a work that Tarragon will touch with a fifty foot pole. She did one project which was a pile of teenage girls, mm -hmm. right? So okay. yeah. probably that's less likely to end up maybe. on stages. Maybe. But I often I often yeah. find like so Judith yeah. Thompson could like usually for most things like take her play and say yeah. Tarragon do this play and they'll yeah. say Judith Thompson come on yeah. in. Yeah, yeah. But Summer Works is just sort of one of those things. But you get and Summer Works. Granted, is a curated yes, yes. Uh, thing, yeah, so it exactly. doesn't have the beautiful anarchy that uh, that Fringe can have. So, as we wrap up, we got about ten minutes to go. We're on. Basically, fringing is about to start. I have to edit this in like thirty minutes and get over to my venue. Yes, by the way, at, at eleven o'clock. So, because um, this, so this is gonna be super uh, super rushed morning. Um, but as the last two days go, uh, what are your plans? What do you plan to see? How are you going to deal with the post fringe, whatever funk? Um, what's what, what's what's on the horizon for the next couple of days, guys? Uh, the next thing for me, I want to go. I want to try to go to see um, uh, once I lived in the box, which mm. is uh, Leary's. Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. And that's at the art bar, right? Yeah, it's yeah. the art bar, and it's been getting uh, really great reviews. And Leary's a friend of mine. The art mm -hmm. bar guys are, are friends of mine. But it, besides that, it's getting really great reviews, mm. and, and I would love to, to be able to see that. Um, I've got a couple of other things that I'm going to try and get out to see mm. as well. Um, I cannot remember the name of the life of me. It's the one about a guy. His set doesn't show up, and he has to put on. Oh, a, on a on a limb and a prayer. On a limb and a yeah, prayer. Yeah, yeah, and that's, yeah. That's on my my last two. Now, one, two, yeah. yeah. Even though these are only two shows that I mentioned, will I be able to get to see them in the last? Well, that, I mean, that, that is that is that is the tough one. I'm actually them. getting. I'm going to be able to see uh, El Diablo of the Cards. Yeah. Today, after my show, first time Everyone that we've actually been 
uh, for most of our shows opposite each other, so we yeah. joke that we're competing with each other. Yeah. Um, so I'm going to go and see that uh, today, and then I'm going to see the Teeny Tiny Music Show so, again yeah. at 7, because why not? Um, and then I don't know. I mean, I have... We're on at 9.30. Hey, there we go. Yeah. Yeah, and uh, uh, congrats on the, the view. Yeah, yeah that's, yeah, that's, that's pretty good. Yeah. People always say, how the hell do you do that? Well, the answer is, you provide them with a decent professional image. <laughs> I love that. So, yeah, no, it's you true. You don't pull it off of Facebook at no. 72 PPI and expect no. they're actually going to use it, right? Um, so, yeah. you know, that $200 to get a professional photographer to spend half an hour with us at Gage Park ultimately turns into... Massive picture. I love that you can see uh, the, the actor, what's his name? Uh, uh, Greg or Chris? Uh, Greg. Uh, I love that you can see his fillings. In the <laughs> oh, that's yeah, that's I love that. I'm like, I picked that up and I was like, that's a great but shot. What do I always tell people? Every yeah. single time we, we take these photographs, I say, I want a picture that looks like a band on the cover of Now yeah. Magazine. Yeah. Uh, that's literally the description. Yeah. It's not going to represent the show other than these are the actors putting on the show. And then at the tech rehearsals, the only time we ever do production stills, which this year we took them, but they've never been used in any. Yeah. Those promo images, though, are gold. And every show has to create them. Yeah. Nobody is going to come by and do it for you. I started doing that a, a couple of years ago. Yeah. They actually mm -hmm. taking deliberate production photographs. Yeah. And yeah. They, they pay off. Yeah. Uh, just, just as a question, have you... Since Thursday, I mean, it's it's just you've only had two days inside. Have you seen a we bump did. at all no, in, in anything? I'm no, expecting it for the final weekend. Again, mm -hmm. we've been playing to half full houses. Our best performance actually was our first one. Mm -hmm. We were almost sixty, um, and then it's kind of petered off yeah. midweek. So I'm hoping the final two performances. We're in the very fortunate situation that we have now officially broken even. Yeah. So oh, the last okay. two yeah. performances are what is hopefully going to make some money that we can then distribute amongst yeah. the company. I'm a little concerned about the heat this weekend. I noticed um, yesterday uh, my show was fewer people than like the fewest number that have come out. I'm sort of seeing generally fewer people on the street, and I'm hoping that this heat wave does not keep yeah. people away I, from yeah. cringe. I, I think that while it might have a small deterioration uh -huh. effect, I think that for the most part it shouldn't yeah. because the buzz is good. Yeah. And so people have gone, people have come to see our opening weekend and mm -hmm. throughout the week they've come to see our shows and they're going home and they're emailing their friends and saying, you cool. want to see yeah. the show. Good. So I think, good. That, I think that that will keep us, and we might not see as robust numbers as we would have yeah. otherwise, yeah. but without the heat, but, but I think that it's, I think that we're, we're okay. The 430 show I thought of Ryan's show yeah. yesterday was completely full. Okay, now, that's I know, good. Yeah. I know that was probably artists, but still, the fact that general audience made an effort before their work day was officially mm -hmm. over. Yeah. yeah. Kind of that's knock off work and get that's in good. to see it. That, that's that's really that's hardening. That's yeah. thing called Buzz. And yes. If you could, if you could bottle buzz, buzz and exactly. sell it to other fringe artists, wouldn't that be amazing? Uh, You'd always break even. You would always break even. <laughs> Olivia, how? What do you? What do you got going for the next couple of days? Um. Well, I'm gonna see Bathtub Girls. Uh -huh. um, I'd like to see Awoken. Teeny tiny music show. Everyone's talking about. Yeah. It. You I'd have to see it. it. You have to see it. Yeah, and just hope for a strong end to a good run. You know. Yeah, um, absolutely, absolutely. It's it's. Um, yeah, it's. I mean, I'm pretty tired. I don't know about you guys, um, but I think I think once I get home on Monday, I'm just going to be. I think we're going to be sleeping. Like, yeah, there's going to be definitely definitely <laughs> some some separation anxiety or something. It's just so. definitely definitely going to be be like that. Uh, Dave, what are you? Uh, what are you uh, for? I got uh, the uh, show tonight, and mm -hmm. then we. Uh, I guess it's kind of nice to. Uh, we're at two o'clock on Sunday, mm. and then we're just we're going to have like a barbecue. And, yeah, um, nice. But I've heard the um, the uh, award show doesn't start till quite late because it's ten o'clock. Yeah, we have to wait for everyone to finish. Well, yes. I mean, technically, so should I take a nap? I, I would. I, I am. Uh, but the thing is that at ten o'clock, there's still shows that are going to be going on because mm -hmm. Sour right. doesn't doesn't start until nine thirty. So what? So when you're trying to tally mm -hmm. ticket uh, sales and and uh, numbers to right. the best of venue. You can't do that until that show. Do they do they look at it overall, or do they only look at the first few days? Wait, what is no, the the no, that's for that's audience, audience choice. choice. That's audience okay. choice. That's audience choice. Uh, but there's a uh, the best uh, of venue and best of fringe are, best are of venue. numbers. Best of venue is numbers. Yeah. Best of venue is numbers. And then critics' choice, and I have no idea how that works. Yeah. 
It's ten o'clock. Yeah. I don't stay up. But that is it late. Me neither. based on like <laughs> numbers with also your standby tickets? I, I believe or? so. Yeah. Yeah. I believe I believe it. I, include, I believe it is based on audience numbers. Yeah. So if you comped every mm. single show <laughs> and sold out yeah. every single audience yeah. and like it's filled every single seat that way, yeah. I mm. think you win. I just think you don't make any you money. You don't make any money. <laughs> I guess I, I sort of figured that it might be the first few days instead of just the whole fringe. I'm pretty sure it's the whole fringe. Okay. You have to ask the power <clears throat> to be. Yeah. I always assumed it was yeah. the whole fringe, and I assumed mm. these are assumptions. Of course, I'm yeah. Mean, these are not facts. And you know, I'm gonna. I'm actually gonna try to find that out just to, to yeah. figure out exactly how it's determined. If it's, is it the first Jessica two days? Is very low yeah. And, yeah. And, uh, yeah. They'll probably be at the at the finale yeah. party. Oh, they're, 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 they're gonna be at Mill. I know that. Uh, 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 Amanda Allison, one of them is going to be at the is going to be at Mills, so I'll just ask her when I get there. I had a funny time uh, when I uh, was early for your show. Mm-hmm. Um, but the, the, the oh, gals, I saw your I saw your picture. Yeah, yeah, the gals were all in the back, and uh, we just got this funny idea of uh, uh, like it's uh, you know we're halfway through the fringe. Um, I, I tweeted something like. Uh, Take a break, girls. You just yeah. all the girls like were pretended to be asleep. <laughs> it's, it's funny. It's like yeah. the, the, yeah. hub, the hub of the fringe. It well, is exhausting, though. I can tell yeah. you from being involved with the fringe organization, particularly the marathon weekends, yeah. which for the fringe staff means it starts at 10 in the morning yep. and frequently yeah. goes till yeah. 2 in the morning. Yeah. And um, if you can grab a nap or something... Uh, do it. Yeah. The the office, yeah. That was not uncommon. <laughs> so I, I figure, like, the awards, the closing party and awards starts at 10. I okay. imagine that it's not going to, like, the awards won't start until, like, 10 30, yeah. like, late When does the on. dancing start? As soon as you want to, Dave. Uh, uh, you, who, you, you know, somebody has start to dancing. start the dancing. I so did it last time. If yeah. you start the dancing, I'm sure that everybody will follow. I started the whole dance party at oh. the, uh, the kickoff <laughs> at the Baltimore. <laughs> I went to the owner. I'm yeah. like, "Where's yeah. the Where's the tunes, man?" And he's like, "Oh, I'm gonna get my iPod." I'm like, "Get your iPod." <laughs> Twenty minutes later, they've got to get his groove on. Me That's in the bathtub, girl. Right on, rocking that yeah. stage. Right on. Yeah. Well, this has been great, you guys. Thanks, thanks so much for for coming out. Thanks for having uh, me. This has been uh, 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 this fringe has been a lot of fun. The roundups have been a lot of fun. Uh, and uh, have a, a great uh, last couple of days for, for your friends, guys. Yeah, you see you on the dance floor. <laughs> <Yay>. <laughs>